Perfect. Attention, this will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by the Governor of the State of California. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial in information printed on this agenda. Instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. All points in the meeting when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting either via internet or telephone shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Call to order, roll call of the directors. Board President Shea. Uh, I am here. Director Kilkenny. Here. Director Oyserman. Here. Director Ruggieri. Here. And I'm going to put Director Case is absent. You don't want to call his name and wait. Director and wait Case. And wait. Director Kate Bueller. Director Case. No, he's absent. Okie dokie. I'd like to adopt the agenda. Any changes? Shall we go ahead then, Eric? Yeah, you're going to adopt as presented. Mm -hmm. As presented, no changes appears. Great, you can move on. Uh, the consent calendar. Draft minutes of the regular meeting of July 13th, 21, and bills paid. Any questions? Hearing none. Uh, I would like public comment. Sure, one second, please. Stephen. Stephen. Hello. We can't hear you, Stephen. Is there a way to message him? Uh, no, he's on. He's just it's a, oh. something on his end. He's not muted okay. or anything. Okay. Should we? Give him a couple more minutes and then. Yeah, he's the protocol. He's there. He is allowed to talk. I'm not sure why there is not a uh, why it is not working, but. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. You yes. You got me now? Yep. yep. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. So, um, as you know, sometimes there's uh, technical problems here. It would be most helpful if uh, there was an informal sound check before the meeting starts so we don't have, have this type of delay. Um, anyhow, um, I just had a, a quick question on the consent calendar um i i've asked this before and i don't quite understand uh we're buying lunches uh i guess about 2300 bucks a pop i don't know what whose lunches those are or, um but can you explain to me is that part of part of the tuition or uh part of what's included in the summer camps and you know it's a it's a big expense, so I'm just wondering if it's it's quite frankly if it's necessary, or perhaps that's just for staff lunches. I don't know. Can anyone answer that? Yeah, we can. Bill, you want you want us to answer that? Uh, I'd probably defer it to Luke, but I'm happy to answer it as well. Sure, go ahead, Eric. Okay, uh, Luke, do you want to? 
Yeah, I can cover that one. Um, right. Yes, Stephen uh, and the board, we um, offer a lunch option for uh, camp campers taking our program. Um, we have a an agreement set up with the Marinwood Market, and um, if parents would like to uh, pay for lunches to the Marinwood Market. We have an agreement where we go and pick up lunches uh, from the market each day, uh, the parents pay for, and then we deliver them to the campers that opt for that option. Um, so it is what you're seeing in the consent calendar is just that transaction. Um, the parents are, are paying for that. Mar Marin Wood is not incurring cost uh, for that program. We are merely um, uh, offering that as a, as a service to our program. Um, and the, that's the way the money is changing hands. Um, so. That's okay, so so one other question too is I know you've been um, taking money uh, for the punch passes, and where is that? How is that revenue captured on the uh, uh, in the bills uh, bills paid or or revenue? What, what's the what's that called? It's captured. It's not in the bills paid because it's not a bills pay. It's a it's a revenue and it's captured within the appropriate account on the uh, on the GL. And what is the appropriate account? Pool operations. So pool operations is just kind of a broad everything from uh, food to punch passes and that sort of thing. The reason I. Uh, I, I ask that is is because it's it seems like the that seems like a loose category and and probably a sizable amount of money is uh, generated through that that uh, that one account. Uh, is that is that correct? Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I wouldn't necessarily consider it a, a sizable amount of money, and I certainly wouldn't consider it loose. Okay. All right, should we move forward? Okay, well, I mean, certainly if you want to report on business operations, you need accuracy in reporting. So, okay, no problem. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, I need a motion to approve the consent calendar. A motion to approve the consent calendar um, for the with the draft minutes of our meeting on July 13th, 2021 and bills paid invoices 5559 25658. Second. Tiff. President Shea. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Iserman. Aye. And Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. Thank you. On to public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. One second, please. All right, can you hear me now? Steven. Can you, can you hear me now or? Thank yes. you. Yes. Go ahead. Yep. Great. Um, so uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, beautiful evening. Um, and tonight's another night where we get to shape our, the future of our community. What's your dream for our community? What, how do you see us evolving? Yeah, we're gonna have a, a building coming up, but how are we gonna improve our facilities? How are we gonna improve our programs? What are we gonna do to make this uh, beautiful community more beautiful and livable? Um, I was up uh, camping this week uh, or, or this month uh, at Salt Point Campground and, uh, above Jenner and uh, uh, had a really wonderful experience uh, in their woods. And um, I did send a, uh, send a message uh, to both Luke, Eric and Bill and I maybe someone else i'm not not 100 percent sure uh they have a um uh handicap access uh path that runs along uh the rugged coast and it's it's gorgeous and um uh i hope uh in your view of 
what Marinwood could be, that one of the things that you, um, you also share is a vision of inclusiveness uh, for our parks and our programs. And uh, we don't really quite have that now. Our, our uh, play structures are not accessible. They're, not, they're really outside of uh, code. They, they need to be brought up to code. And of course, um, uh, I'm going to mention the uh, uh, the access point on the Quietwood uh, Drive is way out of uh, out of code as far as what a uh, accessible uh, ramp is needed, uh, so uh, people can go up and down that ramp. Um, our we have a great community community member that. Uh, uh, has recently developed some health issues and, and now is uh, confined to a wheelchair and a walker. And it would just be really very nice if we could, you know, get this project uh, done uh, so he could access this point. Uh, uh, we could have more, uh, more park benches. Um, uh, we have to think in terms of our full community, not just the kids uh, uh, playing around in our summer camps. So anyhow, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else, Eric? No. Okay. Uh, District Matters. We have E1, fiscal year. 2020, 2021, year end profit and loss financial statements pre audit. Eric. Yeah, thanks, Bill. I tried to give everybody again a, a detailed uh, lead in report to some of this. I'll try to keep it brief over some of the highlights. Um, again, I do want to uh, reiterate that this is, a, you know, financial statements solely represent operating revenue and expenditures for the fiscal year. Uh, placed against the original operating budget as approved by the board. Uh, the data does remain subject to change given any adjustments that might need to be, that might be identified during the annual fiscal audit, uh, which is engaged. And as soon as uh, we get a couple things, we'll actually get started with. Um, obviously, the COVID-19 continues to impact everything. Uh, we had to, uh, uh, be prepared to pivot several times throughout the year and the rec department uh, in terms of programs and offerings certainly pivoted the fire department certainly wasn't immune to uh, making accommodations for this and neither was the parks department um, that said i think all of our staff did an incredibly admirable job navigating through what was an ever-changing uh, series of adjustments so uh, my hat is really off to all of them through all of that the district did uh, conclude the fiscal year with a strong financial performance. Our cash balance as of June 30th in the general fund was approximately 5.88 million. Um, the fiscal year, our total revenue exceeded our operating expenses by approximately $990,000 um, compared to what was budgeted, which I believe was somewhere closer to two let me take a quick look. I apologize. I don't have this right in front of me. Uh, it was budgeted to be just under $200,000. The uh, Again, we are very conservative with our budget, as especially at the time the budget was approved. Uh, there was just a huge amount of unknown. Uh, some of the items of note within that 990 uh, revenue over expenses, keeping in mind that our ad valorem tax revenue did exceed our budgeted forecast by about $189,000. We were very conservative in how we projected out tax revenues with having very little information at the time as to uh, how this pandemic would affect our ad valorem property taxes as was evidented towards the end of the year. It really didn't have a strong effect and we continued to have uh, sizable gains there. Um, through Q3, the district had realized about $21,000 in interest revenue. Since this report has been published, we've actually got Q4 interest. 
which I want to say is only around $2,000. So this is going to come in under, and this is due to the county pivoting to a very conservative investment strategy, given the volatility of the markets. Um, in uh, point in reference, we doubled that amount of interest last year while having significantly less in our general fund. So it just kind of is a, is a market performance. Um, capital reserves designation was budgeted at 100,000. However, that is not accounted for in here because capital reserves aren't actually an expenditure. It's just a, a movement of funds. So with that 990, I would take down 100,000 that says that should go towards a capital reserve as designated by the board. Uh, and actually just a reserve, it's not necessarily a capital reserve. Um, a couple other items of note within the PL, we did um, it just in terms of proper accounting, book some account receivables and account payables. One of them was for a strike team reimbursement. This is when our firefighters go out on uh, out of county assignments for wildfire. Uh, that overtime incur there was just over $93,500. Um, we also had a booked a receivable in the amount of thirteen two fifty nine for overtime of our staff working in Santa Fe that gets reimbursed by Santa Fe, and a paramedic incentive reimbursement of just over seventeen thousand uh, dollars. What I can tell you is, uh, literally yesterday we actually received payment for all of that, so that was booked as a receivable as of June thirtieth, and actually has been received. We also booked an account payable for chief officer services of 51093. We have received the invoice and payment has been processed. So those have been moved off of the balance sheets and into the actual uh, performance. Um, that's more of an audit thing. Um, additionally, slightly over $527,000 in unearned revenue for summer camp and pool fees were received last fiscal year for dates occurring this fiscal year. So as such, that revenue gets booked as deferred revenue. And on July 1st, it is booked as revenue for the fiscal year that we are in now. Um, just a few notes on the capital expenditures there that I gave you, uh, as well as some of the planned capital expenditures that were not completed for various reasons and have been carried over to the 21-22 fiscal year. Um, I can tell you the portable generator, actually, we were finally able to get that. Those have been on back order due to supply chain issues that came in uh, late last month. The, uh, some of these replacement items are booked because we are expecting the needed replacement, but we're not going to replace it until the other equipment actually fails. Uh, and as of now, it's still working. Um, we moved the top code applications to the tennis courts more for a seasonality and uh, without having to shut down the tennis courts. So that'll happen this year. And then uh, some of the equipment that we are looking at there, especially for our parts department, uh, will happen after the maintenance facility is completed and we have a proper place to store it. Um, in regards to some of the rec financials, uh, we certainly, you know, planned and budgeted for a full year preschool program and after school program. However, given the state of uh, the pandemic and the coronavirus, we actually only ran a half a year of a preschool program that didn't start until January 2021. And the after school program served a relatively small number of kids and kind of came and went as uh, schools opened and closed. Um, and then we had budgeted for no pool operations. Um, I imagine Savon and Bill will probably remember this. And then as things changed, we were able to open up the pool. Uh, the other challenge, obviously, with all of this is just looking at uh, seasonality of everything. Um, as has been explained with prior budgets, we budget out based on the upcoming season. However, the upcoming season actually spans multiple fiscal years. So when you look at it over a course of several fiscal years, it's all even out, but to look at it and budget it strictly by a fiscal year makes no sense when the programs themselves span multiple fiscal years. Um, and then I have other department specific summary notes uh, after the financials. Um, again, in summary, the uh, I'm, I'm very, 
pleased with staff and their ability to manage, you know, not only the programs, but the associated finances throughout what has been easily an incredibly challenging year. And uh, my hat is off to all of them. That said, we're not out of the woods. It is not unreasonable to expect healthcare costs to rise accordingly and directly impacting our OPEB ULL. UAL, the global investment markets continue to fluctuate. That's going to impact the pension UAL. Yeah. I, I'm certainly not in a place where I would say I, I would veer from my conservative strategy of how we should be budgeting and looking at the expenditures and revenues and remaining conservative uh, with the knowledge that uh, mm -hmm. if they if we exceed them, hooray, but let's set expectations at a reasonable level and then do everything we can to exceed them, which I think has been the result the last several years. No question. No question at all. Eric, the, the 186,000 increase, that was kind of a surprise. Yeah, in ad valorem taxes? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we I, I know it's a while back, Bill, but we talked a lot about this as I was kind of looking at projections and I scaled back my increased projections just right. because it was we were in such an uncertain time, not to mention, I mean, the stock markets were getting hammered then and uh, those markets absolutely affect interest rates, they affect loan rates, they affect uh, property turnovers and it's the you know the property turnovers that are the biggest driver to your ad valorem property taxes right. well i'm not a uh, i'm not an expert in all of this but i think you know one of the things that we did see was people fleeing the bigger cities and moving into suburbs and people leaving california to move to other places and that opened up the uh, sales in marin you know and this isn't exclusive only to houses in marinwood ad valorem you know follows mm -hmm. a formula that goes across the county. No, I'm, I'm just for curiosity, uh, going into the current fiscal year, uh -huh. uh, I'd love to keep that conservative bent going forward, knowing that we're still going to have sales and prices are going to keep going up. And I just don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, yeah. And we, I, you know, Bill, I'll be honest with you. We certainly did that. Um, I'm just kind of looking at the numbers right now. You know, the, the main line is obviously that very first line, which is the property tax current secured. Uh, last year, you know, we received a total of 1.78 uh, and we actually budgeted 1.79 for this current yeah. fiscal year. So we really uh, are still remaining very conservative in this. Okay. Uh, and again, you know, when we make the other budgets, we don't have all of the numbers. You know, we didn't get final property tax numbers till you know closer towards the end of July, because uh, they continue to trickle in, even though they're posted with an effective date of six thirty. Okay. So Thank to you. your point, we're there, Bill. We're staying and remaining yeah. conservative on this uh, awesome. by all stretches. Thank you. Yep. Anybody? Hearing nothing. Anything from the Savon? I was just saying not right now, no. Okay. Anything from the public? Yeah, one second, please. Hi. Um, so uh, I totally agree with uh, President Shea. It's a good good uh, business practice to be um, modest in the projections. In every projections, though, we, we really have two components in our budget. One is uh, largely knowable and predictable, and that is our taxes. And then the second is our business operations. And it seems to me that uh, we can do better in our business operations. I'm not 100% certain of that because we really don't have a clear, I don't believe we ha don't have a clear understanding of our revenues and our costs because everything has been kind of uh, meshed together. Um, so in terms of reporting, I, I would like to see you know, better reporting on business operations. For example, it occurs to me uh, with these punch passes, there's really 
you know, what is the budget for, what's the target revenue for punch passes? Do we have an amount? What's, what's the target revenue amount for uh, pool rentals, uh, picnic table rentals? Uh, and when we open up our uh, other facilities, what, what are our uh, uh, revenue um, targets for those? Though that really should be thought of and managed separately so we can do a better job of uh, improving operations. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Anybody else, Eric? No. Okay, how about the district manager report? Sure, uh, quick update. Uh, the big one on the park maintenance facility building permit has been issued. Um, as I put in here, not a real reason as to why the review took so long, uh, especially given the outcome of the review resulted in no, uh, no changes to the plans, uh, to the building construction plans as submitted. Um, Regardless, the permit has been issued. We did have a final pre-construction meeting with the builder, the architect, the structural engineer, and myself. Uh, construction has already gotten going. They're beginning with the grading uh, and some of the other pre-work for the site. Uh, everything is rolling, permits in hand, and uh, we are moving forward finally. Um, goats grazing on district open space. Um, you probably saw the goats that were out there. This has been concluded at the last meeting. I told you uh, we still had some uncertainty if we were gonna be able to get goats out on Grasshopper Hill. Um, after further review by the goat handlers, they were able to get them out there as well. Um, now that all of that is concluded, um, we're kind of back uh, to looking and planning on some of the handwork uh, and, and physical work that'll happen out there. All of this was as described in the presentation that was given last March. Um, again, included a link in the report for that for anybody who's interested in watching it. Um, one thing I do wanna bring up is, uh, and right now I don't have any further information on this, um, the possible return to in-person meetings. Um, as it is currently written, uh, executive order in 2920 is issued by the governor of the state of California. Uh, is set to expire on September 30th. Uh, that still gives the governor's office some level of time to decide if it wants to be extended or not. In the event that it is not extended, we will be going back to live personal meetings. Um, in the event that it is extended, then uh, we would most likely stay here with remote meetings. Um, obviously, you know, we're experiencing quite a surge in COVID right now, especially with the Delta variant. I personally wouldn't be surprised based on some of the conversations I have had uh, with professionals in the health field and the public health director and what's coming out of the county if the uh, governor did extend this, but you know, that very well may happen the final week of September. So uh, that said, we might be back to in-person meetings in October or we might not. Uh, just we'll follow the state's lead on that. Um, and then just one other little item of note, uh, while it doesn't completely impact us and we don't have a lot of, uh, or any authority over the building of it, uh, in speaking with the civil engineer for the proposed Oak Senior Living Facility, it does seem like that project is back on the wheels again. And ideally, uh, they are starting to move forward again in actually getting that facility up built and operational. Um, there is some small impact to that, uh, uh, to the district in that it would be annexed into our area and there would also be potential future tax revenue implications. But that said, the district has no authority over uh, the approval of this facility as a whole. Um, otherwise, if there's any questions on my report here, I'm happy to answer them. No, I'm curious about the Oaks. Um, it's been an ongoing 30 year process we're finally getting some movement on that again because they were going to start moving that permit got pulled a couple of years ago i believe and all of a sudden it ground to a halt and now it's back on again yeah my understanding on it grounding to a halt had to do with a couple things but the main uh, issue was the developer of this project is not also looking to be the operator of the facility itself they had an operator on board, but that operator pulled out. Um, I don't know if that was 
you know, pandemic related or not. I just know what I've been told uh, and I'm uh, just kind of speaking secondhand here. Uh, my understanding is they have an operator on board again and they are looking to move forward and actually uh, break some ground here uh, before too long. But I know that they're kind of going over a couple of revisions and I expect to meet um, and speak with them tomorrow. Uh, as they like, mm -hmm. because this will abut directly up to uh, district open space as well. And there are some mitigations that were explained to the board several years ago when the developer came in that uh, they have to replant some native grassland uh, that's going to be disturbed. And uh, they had asked if uh, it would be possible to plant it on our land. I don't know that that's still their plan, but I'll have some other uh, either way. It really wouldn't have much impact on us. And we all have more information on that tomorrow. On the curiosity, though, is annexed into Marinwood as if it's not part of Marinwood currently, that land? Um, no, it is that land. It, yes. They, uh, to give you a simple answer, it is within our what's known as a sphere of influence. Right. Um, so we would be responsible like for fire service um, and things along those lines. Uh, Yes, but uh, you know, not everything that's within there necessarily gets annexed into Marinwood. Our sphere of influence is a large circle. If you look at CSA 13, we that has nothing to do with us. So it's that type of thing. But part of this development is it's annexed in and we would have some of the responsibilities for park rec fire street lights. Right. I, I remember because the oaks and the 28 housing Correct. units that are going in were all part of the singular project at one time and then it was split right okay. right and that's also when the district acquired that large swath of open space uh between those two things the kind of hill behind elvia court right. because part of the planning agreement was they would uh, give that land to the district to be dedicated you know preserved as open space <laughs> okay thank you uh-huh Anybody else? Where can people read more about the Oaks Senior Living Facility if we uh, I don't know, but I'll see if I can find out some of those answers tomorrow. Okay, maybe we can also link that so that, that yeah, minimizes I'm sure. the amount that you get asked that you can't answer because it's not our Right. Yeah. And I'm, I would also assume that uh, if you go on to the Marin County website and in specifically into the planning department and then specifically into current projects that there is most likely a link for both that project as well as the residential development that's happening within okay. there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Right. There was at one time. I haven't looked at it lately. <laughs> okay. But all all current projects are listed in there. Uh, at least would as it, they're going through planning. Would it make it easier for us and for our community if we created a link just to that so people don't have to go through multiple layers since we do have less tech savvy people in our district uh yeah i can look at it i, I don't have a natural place where that would go say on our website because we don't have a lot of links well, say, this, you know if you want is, county information this is posted right what's so that just, yes so then we could just highlight the oak senior living facility project and create make that a link possibly uh, sure. uh, uh, if they have one and then, I, I really, and then, I really don't and then we can just say it's linked if you click on it it's linked uh, sure. if you have more questions on that link there's who you can contact i i just want to make sure that it's clear to people what it is and that they get all their answers answered yeah i would don't make know it, any more than what's on the website so I, I would make it clear to them that it's a project under the authority of the county and those would yeah. be the proper people to ask okay because people Anybody deserve else? to know. Anything from the public? Yeah, one second. Hi. Uh, I guess let's start with the Oaks uh, project. Um, I do recall uh, that uh, Irv Schwartz, who is the engineer on that project uh, uh, of some sort, I, I don't know exactly what his role was but he had negotiated the extension of a walking path from our mini park marinwood park 
all the way down to the freeway. And that would be really wonderful. That would open up um, additional uh, walking area for the public, as well as access to that open space behind that, that facility. So I would hope, um, Eric, that you, you know, kind of keep abreast of that uh, project and just contact the developers and say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to this when you're ready. Um, uh, you know, we're all ears. <laughs> Um, but I think that would be a wonderful addition to our park. Uh, one of my big dreams is, and it's not really feasible at the moment, but is to have a contiguous um, uh, walking path from the headwaters of uh, Miller Creek all the way down to the, um, uh, to the bay. That would just be wonderful. Um, of course, it, it would entail crossing a bunch of public lands, but we should try to secure this when we can. Which brings up a second point, and I, I guess I'll wait to the recreation area as far as um, uh, a bike policy and, and things we can do to enhance our recreational opportunities in our uh, parks and open space. As far as um, other items, um, the park maintenance facility, uh, replacement project. It's disappointing that we don't have any information on the delay. I'm sure there's a reason for that delay, whether it's someone was out for, I don't know, uh, maternity leave or what, but um, it, it's frustrating that there is absolutely no information um, uh, because, you know, it's costing us money. It's costing everybody money. And, uh, uh, that's unfortunate. Um, they say what you can't measure, you cannot manage. And it's frustrating that we don't have more specific information. And I guess the thing that kind of shocked me on this month's manager report was a disclaimer saying that this doesn't include everything that happened this month. Well, what does that mean? It means you're not writing it down or you're not communicating it. We'd like, like uh, our manager to communicate with the public all the problems and all the successes during the month. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. <sighs> Anybody else, Eric? No. I guess not. Then we're on to fire department matters and i believe the chief is not here tonight the chief is not here he is on a family vacation yeah. um you got to go through the minutes first though into draft minutes of fire commission meeting are there any questions Nope. Anybody? Can you open up to the public? Kathleen, darling. I was there, so no, I don't have any. <laughs> it went well. It went well. Oh. Uh, I guess anything from the public? On the draft minutes of the fire commission. Yep. Mm, no. Uh, let's go on to the re chief report and activity summary. Yeah, again, the chief is not available today. I'm familiar with some of the things uh, that are in his report. If there's some questions, I'm happy to field them the best I can, or I can certainly inform the chief of what questions might have been. I see there's nice pictures of Lucas Valley Road at the turn. They are doing a lot of work out there. I actually personally drove out there a couple weekends ago. Uh, it, they're they're breaking stuff apart and they've got a time stoplight out there as well. So I, I was would, there today. Yep, it's uh, 
I expect delays for a while if you go out that direction. Uh, but in the meantime, from the fire perspective, the chiefs also went out uh, or one of his designees just to really make sure that, uh, yes, the engine can maneuver through here. Um, one of the problems is line of sight and the way these lights are set up. You cannot see one of the lights that's stopping traffic in one direction. Um, from the other light stopping traffic. So uh, it, it could potentially delay response uh, if we got called in on a mutual aid out in that direction. We did a lot of cutting of trees. You can definitely tell. So hopefully there won't be a need for fire to go out there. Well, you get a lot of accidents out there. Yeah. A lot of accidents. I know. Um, Okay, uh, I have no questions other than other than that. Uh, if nobody else has any, I'll call for the public. One, one second, please. Hi. Uh, so, at can you hear me? Go ahead, Stephen. Okay. Um, so at the last meeting, I uh, we had our fire report, and I asked about a fatality that occurred, you know, probably within a quarter mile of, or a half mile uh, of our uh, firehouse. This was the motor scooter that was hit by a deer, and a 63-year-old man was, I guess, found dead and cardiac arrest. Um, all I knew at that time was, uh, what I had seen in, uh, the patch and, uh, the chief promised to get some more detail. And unfortunately he didn't put it in there. What I'm interested in knowing is who was the responding agency in the paper. It seemed to indicate it was the, uh, chip, which, which may have, uh, been there, but I it made no mention of Marinwood Fire Department, and I'm kind of curious if they didn't respond. Why? Why didn't they? Was there were they occupied elsewhere? What What happened? But anyhow, it's just kind of like a big mystery, and it was obviously a tragedy. And uh, I just think we need a little bit of a report on that. Um, uh, you know, I. I haven't seen the clearing um, uh, that has been taking place uh, uh, under this new uh, uh, wildfire authority. And I really would like to see that. Um, I did view something up in the central coast when I was camping or, or the north coast. And uh, uh, just a little anxious that we, we do this the right way. I'm, I'm sure that that there's a will to do it the right way, but I just want to make certain that we are doing it in an environmentally responsible manner. So, um, I, so my, my, so basically I, I have a question for the chief that I'd still like answered regarding that, uh, fatality that happened near the firehouse, as well as uh, a little bit more information on, um, uh, the clearing, uh, uh, so, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Anybody else from the public, Eric? No. Okay. The date of the next fire commission meeting is September 7th. Uh, on to park and rec, recreation and park maintenance activity report. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Bill. Hey. Oops. So, hi. Uh, so the big um, the news in the rec department is just that we're on our, our final stretch, uh, on our, our final week of summer camp this week, and um, we're excited about that. Uh, it's been a really good summer, um, and uh, we've run uh, five, well, four two-week sessions, and this is a, a sort of a half session, just one week long to, to end the summer. And um, things have gone extremely well. Um, 
And up until uh, last week, we uh, made it all the way through without any uh, COVID drama, but we did end up with um, two COVID cases in our camp program last week that caused us to have to shut down two groups. We had one, one camper um, test positive and one of our camp staff members in a different camp group test positive early in the week um, or over the, over the weekend, and, uh, which, which we found out about on, on Monday of, this, um, of last week. And, uh, so we closed those groups and contacted public health and, and took all the steps we needed to take um, and got everybody uh, all the messaging out and let, let all the camp parents know what was going on. Um, and everyone was extremely gracious and, and for the most part, um, very understanding, um, although disappointed by the news. And um, overall, it, it, all of that went fine and, and um, things are kind of back to normal this week. Thankfully, the, the timing worked out where um, all of the uh, affected uh, campers were able to return to camp this week, anyone that was signed up. So uh, we're grateful that, that we didn't end up having to have people out for um, over two different weeks. Um, and so, so nobody else tested positive? Uh, no, to our knowledge, okay. there have not been any other um, positive uh, test results from uh, any of the camps that were um, any of the in, of those two co cohorts, thankfully. So, um, uh, you know, closing down the groups is is how the system's supposed to work, and it's precautionary that uh, we assume that any of the other campers in those groups may have been exposed, and so we close the groups down and have everyone stay home uh, for for um, up to 10, 10 days, depending on if they get tested and get their test result back. So um, everything went the way it's supposed to go. And the system, you know, we worked with the health department to, to follow all the, the, the steps. And, um, you know, we were, we were hoping to get through the whole summer unscathed uh, like we did last year. But, uh, uh, but thankfully it was um, small and everyone is okay. Um, all the affected uh, campers, are doing fine, so we're, we're happy to report that, and um, looking to end this week with a with a um, you know in a strong way. Uh, I have a question. question. Were yeah. refunds issued? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, everyone that was forced okay. to stay home um, were issued refunds. So and we'll see all those checks or whatever expenditures next week, or do they, or next month. I mean, or do they go back on their credit card? Or I'm just asking. Um, the some of the refunds were issued via credit card and okay. some, will, some will be issued via check and those will show up in our um you know uh hey, bills calendar paid. yeah bills paid exactly okay so um so yeah and I, uh we were hoping to not have to deal with that but um you know we've we've had around 300 uh 300 to 350 campers a week um not including staff here every week so um, we've done we've done pretty well getting through uh, nine weeks of summer and so um we're happy to be almost done though to for, for that stance. so the staff's been great everyone uh was great that that was helping us deal with this all and um everyone the kids the campers uh, I mean, the campers, the camp families, the staff, and everyone have um, been great with the guidelines and, and wearing their masks when indoors, and um, all of this has gone um, pretty smoothly, and, and it's, it's been a really, really positive summer. Um, so we're, we're, in spite of having a very dramatic week last week dealing with all this and uh, making all the phone calls and turning people away at the, at the beginning of camp, uh, it, it all ended up, it, it's been a really um, positive summer and, and we're uh, very grateful for the staff and, and everyone and, and how, how well it has, has transpired. We're so glad we got to run camp, um, you know, this summer and, and get back to a much more normal version of camp than we had last year. So that's been, um, it's been great. Uh, so can I, can I interject for a second, oh, yeah. Luke? Uh, I actually want to uh, just give Luke and his team some uh, proper due credit uh, because okay. they not only they not only spent a lot of time communicating directly to the families involved, but uh, the same days had email uh, information go out to every camper's family, um, making sure that everybody was aware that hey, this has happened. These are the steps that we took, um, and I just you know communication is key and kept everybody informed. So uh, the fact that they were able to get the proper information, make the moves that they needed to make, and then, uh, you know, not only making direct phone calls and uh, emails and everything else to the impacted camps, but to every single uh, camp family that was in attendance. So kudos to Luke and his team for that. That was a lot of work. Um, here, here. Yeah, they did a great job. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate thank you. that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, and so in uh, other news, the 
the pool season chugs along. We are um, still in our summer season for another uh, another week after this, and then we'll we'll transition to the fall hours. Um, the pool's been super busy this last uh, few weeks with all of the the warm weather. We're so happy that we were able to open up some recreation swim hours every day, um, and the place has been has been um, just very popular. We've had a lot of families coming in um, on the weekends and the weekends, so that's been great. Uh, private lessons have been pretty much completely booked all summer, and we've got uh, lessons continuing into the fall. Um, so this fall we'll be offering, we'll continue to offer lap swim, recreation swim, private and semi-private swim lessons, um, water polo and lifeguard training, and we'll be open in, uh, until October 8th, which is our, our normal closing date for, for the fall season. So that's all going very well and uh, we'll continue with that. Uh, and the, you know, the weather's been great, and staffing's been great, so um, we're looking forward to continuing that. Um, for as far as our, our classes and events for the fall, things are very up in the air right now. Um, as the, at the time I put this report together, we were working on our Marinwood review and had a lot of classes scheduled to be starting up in the next few weeks, um, as well as some events on the calendar. And just the events of this last week, uh, not just not events specifically in Marinwood, but just across the country and some of the um, health uh, information coming out has thrown some things into question and a lot of things, a lot of start days are going to be postponed and we'll um, kind of be announcing what's going to happen with our classes and um, and, and some of our uh, events we'll, we'll, we'll have to rethink and see what, what's going to happen with those. I know the Lions Club had their car show scheduled uh, in September and that will um, now be postponed until next year, unfortunately. Um, and so we're going to be playing it by ear like we have this last uh, year and a half. And we'll continue to put information out as we finalize when um, certain programs and, and events will be able to take place. But uh, we'll continue to work with the health department and, and see what um, is the best thing for our, our residents and our participants and our instructors and see what programs make sense to offer and, and how we can offer those. Uh, some of our indoor uh, classes, like some of the exercise things, we're going to try to run um, outdoor versions of as long as the weather permits and we'll be um, sort of pivoting to try to make some of these things still happen but um, uh, we definitely are, are rethinking things right now. Yes, Yvonne. So I found out from the district that the kids are going back without any cohorts or social distancing within the classroom so I'm wondering what we're going to be doing. Are we offering the full gamut of aftercare because there's no need for cohorting so um, yeah, our after school program will be uh, pretty much back to normal as of right now. Um, the kids will be wearing masks and there will be, um, you know, a, a few considerations based on the current health guidance, but um, we will be offering our, our standard after school program this okay. fall. As well as our, our preschool program. Uh, as okay. of right now. Uh, we were planning on uh, starting our indoor private rentals of the community center this October, I'm sorry to, to take uh, reservations. And we're going to postpone that until further notice and um, just keep, uh, we're, we're paying attention to the to the health guidance on, on indoor events and what the recommendations are. And there's a lot of things that are coming out right now and it's not it's not clear exactly what is the right path, but we're going to um, wait to, to take reservations for now. Um, and that's since I wrote this in my report. So things are changing very rapidly and uh, we're just trying to pay attention and, um, and make sure that we're uh, being prudent and, and keeping everyone um, safe as, as best we can. So, um, uh, should we we'll, update this on the website since it's posted so people don't think that this information is correct? Well, the website uh, where people would probably go for most of their information on our classes and rentals and, and programs is going to be the recreation pages on there, which we which we are keeping updated okay. and, and constantly changing. I just so, want to make sure that we don't um, like put information out there and then. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the website is our, is our great resource for that. And we'll, we'll be continuing to um, keep things updated on there and putting emails out to the participants of those particular programs um, as best we can. So we'll, we'll keep everybody informed um, as we can. But um, yeah, the information is, seems to be changing a lot. And we'll, we'll keep updating as needed. But, okay. um, on the on the parks maintenance side of things, uh, we've uh, staff just finished a project I did not list in my report, but we had a report of a, a broken open space fence. Um, I believe that was Kernberry um, that we uh, were able to staff able to get there pretty quickly and, and replace um, a, a fence. It wasn't a gate; it was just one of the fences opening, uh, leading to open space with a with an entryway. And they uh, worked quickly to get um, put some new posts and new boards up this week, and it looks very nice. And, and they were able to get that done in about two days, so um, that was great. The old fence had looked like it was like 
40 years old or something and it just deteriorated with, um, over time. So the next one we hope will last uh, a good 40 years. And so glad staff were able to get on that. Uh, we got a report a couple weeks ago of a, of a dangling tr a large tree limb in the fireman's group picnic area um, that was reported to us, I think, yeah, July 21st. Um, in the area that people, you know, people may be walking. And um, the, so we were able to get one of our tree contractors to come out there and take care of that. And the firefighters were able to get out and, and block the area off with caution tape to make sure no one walked and in, in, into that spot. And we we're able to remove the hazard um, with that later that day without anyone uh, being injured. So um, that was great that we were able to, to, to get on that. And that was a, a resident, or not, I'm not sure it was a resident, but it was a, someone, you know, walking the path. And uh, we do rely on on uh, our, our many dog walkers and hikers that are able to alert us of, of different hazards in the area that where we can't be everywhere um, seeing all of this at once. So um, I feel like that system worked well. We're able to get the word out, get that taken care of and, um, and keep that place, uh, that area safe. Uh, staff have been busy repairing a, a big irrigation um, leak over at the Fireman's Hill next to the firehouse uh, a couple of weeks ago that um, it was an area just riddled with tree roots growing into our into our pipes, and um, uh, staff were able to identify that, get it dug out, replace the uh, pipes, and um, and protect from from future tree tree root growth. Uh, but unfortunately, the water had to be turned off uh, for a few days, a few different times during that process uh, when we had over 90 degree days. And um, you've seen some of the results of that in the park. Some of the areas uh, pretty dry and. Uh, we've got the work cut out for us moving into the fall season in terms of um, getting the turf back up to uh, green and, and healthy. So um, we, are, we are planning on addressing the turf in all of the parks uh, once camp is done. And we uh, hope to have the grass back and growing in the next um, few weeks to, to a couple months. So that is a big uh, to do on our, on our list. Um, I'm not going to need to go through every, every little thing on the, on the list, but um, uh, I did put a, a bit on here about the about the pool maintenance, and I'll just summarize that um, pool keeping the pool cl chlorinated and uh, has been a big challenge this season with a national chlorine shortage um, and a national um, shortage mm -hmm. in. What was the what was the other thing I, I said? Titanium. On Titanium and getting a chlorine generator ordered. And um, since I <laughs> since I wrote this report, we did get uh, our replacement chlorine generator. Uh, so so that's been very helpful. But we've been able to keep the pool up and running, and everything's been um, where it needs to be. Uh, it's just been a little bit tricky figuring that out. And we had a couple uh, clarity issues for um, about a week and a half there that that we were finally able to diagnose, and and things are crystal clear now. So. Um, the staff have been great um, brainstorming and, and experimenting and uh, we've, we've tackled a few of these things and uh, right now everything is running uh, really well and I think we'll be just fine to get through the, the remainder of the pool season uh, without any, any uh, without too much drama, you know, knock, knock on wood. Um, so that's all I'll cover for now if, um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that, that anyone has on the, the Parker Rec side. Kind of all encompassing. Thanks, Luke. I just want to apologize to yell for yelling at everybody to go to bed. Oh. <laughs> We've all been there. I have one question. In this wonderful packet, was there something about updating our utility vehicle? Uh, boy, that kind of goes back. Yes, we have two utility vehicles. Uh, we've been budgeting. One of them is pretty aged uh, and we are expecting its lifespan has uh, is is reaching its very end. We've actually budgeted to replace that utility vehicle for the last couple of years, but the thing just won't die and it keeps running and it continues to prove effective. That said, we're also not putting any additional funds into uh, any sort of uh, maintenance that goes beyond, you know, change the oil, uh, make sure the brakes work good. Um, but it, it, it seems to keep working. It's living longer than we expect it to. Uh, I can only hope the same for me. And is that the little putt putt one? The yep. Red? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because my follow up question was how old is the UTV and are we going to replace it? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah, no, not the, not the Kawasaki. This is the John Deere that looks a little bit more like a, uh, you know, just kind of a maintenance vehicle. Uh, 
it's six wheel we've had it for a long time uh, okay. and that's why we keep it in the budget and keep pushing it over year over year so that way when it does die i mean they certainly rely on having both of those available to them uh, and when it does die we'll replace it with a newer uh, more modern uh, type of a vehicle you know, Mark, Marco likes to joke, uh, it was it was here when Marco was hired and it seemed uh, like it had been around for a while at that point. He's been here for 30 years, so. <laughs> so the moral of the story is buy John Deere because they, they run forever. Diesel, diesel. Yeah. Oh, yes. So that's what we'll be replacing it with, correct? We'll, we'll see. Yeah. What's ever in the budget, yeah. Um, I would also like to just reiterate and thank you for not just the last two weeks and the shutdown of the camp the summer camps but everything that you and your staff did um to prep it by being able to expand it and make all those phone calls and get more kids signed up and again fill staff slots um and to the pool staff and open up more lessons because as swim team was limited to be able to take kids you guys were able to, sorry, you guys were able to teach more swimmers and it only thrives in our community to have strong, you know, swimmers and community members. So thank you very much for you and your staff. Oh, thank you for saying that, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I'll well, second that and add that not only did you manage to staff it, but you managed to staff it at an amazing level when keeping with the standards of having people that all the parents want to steal as sitters. So kudos. You can have them as long as they don't conflict with their scheduled hours here. <laughs> nice, nice. Fluffy the dog agrees with know. all of that too. That's right. And then I also want to add to our maintenance staff for always jumping on everything at a drop of a dime. I don't want to forget about them either. So thank everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. There's I, will third else. That. I will third all of the compliments. I mean, seriously, <laughs> uh, this summer this summer has been incredible. Both of my kids have and enjoyed camp. They come home and just talk about how much fun that they have every day. And it's been um, it's just it's been such a, a pleasure. And so um, you know, my my family and I are all very very grateful for the work that uh, that y'all did this summer. So yeah. well, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Still no pressure. Just kidding. Yeah, because there's next year. <laughs> nice. Uh, there's, if there's nothing else, if there's any more kudos, uh, I'll turn it over to the uh, public for comment. Sure. One second, please. Can we go ahead, can Stephen. We yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'll give a kudo. Uh, once again, uh, it's great that our summer camps are operational and, and doing well. And I always love seeing that because that's such an important um, thing, not only for the kids, but the entire community and, and surrounding communities. So uh, I, I think it's very special that we offer that uh, uh, to, to the community. Um, the pool um, is, you know, I'm a, I said this in the past, I'm a, a pool swimmer. I've been a, been a lap swimmer forever. Uh, however, this year I, I've been denied that, the last two years I've been denied that opportunity because of the uh, restrictions as well as the real huge cost increase. I'm very disappointed that we didn't have a more affordable option. We're doing punch passes now, but that's still kind of expensive if, if you're a daily swimmer. Um, but the good thing is I've been walking a lot more and walking in our open space and enjoying that. And there's a couple of issues that I've noticed, um, and that's the increase of bike traffic on what once were exclusively walking trails. It seems like these electric bikes in particular um, really encourage people to get out and um i think we may look at uh issuing uh uh some i, th I think it'd be a good idea to have a five mile an hour speed limit in the dog leg of the park because some people really scream down there 
you know, scaring, scaring dogs and, and, uh, and walkers. And it's, it's just not the place for it. They can do it in other parts. Um, uh, secondly, I'd like to see our open space opened up more. I'd like to see more bike trails and I'd like to see a more uh, conscious effort to uh, encourage people to get out into our open space, not only as hikers, but as bikers. And I have a few thoughts on that. Um, I did post on Nextdoor about a bell program and apparently this coincides well with what the Mountain Bike Coalition is doing, but I, th I think that's something that Marinwood Park in particular uh, our Marinwood uh, Community Services District could do for our community and outreach. Um, of course, our community has changed. We have a younger generation that grew up mountain biking, and so I expect that sport just to grow and grow and grow. Uh, thanks for the tree work. Um, the uh, you know, I've been using the park quite a bit uh, over in Quietwood Grove. I've been uh, playing music with my friends. It's great. Um, and we should not forget that we have a big, big park and lots of potential in our park for just wonderful things to uh, make this community a better place. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. If there's nothing else, the date of the next Park and Rec Commission meeting is August 24th. And with that, I would call for board members items of interest, request for future agenda items. Anybody? Mm. Okay. Just what we're going to be provided with the closeout of the pool season and the camp season and an update on what we're going to be doing in the fall. I mean, all the normal stuff that we'll be getting in the next two months. And, you know, updates as things come with the facility. Anybody else? Public. Yeah, one second, please. Let's drop this down. Yes. Um, so uh, I think we, we need to talk in terms of legal compliance. There are three things that I'm aware of that um, Marinwood is not in compliance with. I mentioned um, the accessibility. Um, in our playground equipment. Um, and while it's not technically a, a legal requirement, I think it's a good idea that, that we try to be as accessible as possible uh, in our entire park because Marinwood Park is now Central Park for our little community. Um, secondly, um, you mentioned the John Deere. I'm not sure if anyone is aware, but I will make you aware that that vehicle is illegal. It's not CARB certified. It should have been retired uh, about 15 years ago by, by law. Um, so you should simply be aware of that. So that does is something that should be replaced. You're polluting with a non-compliant vehicle. There's no way that you should be using that. And then the other thing is the cargo containers that were purchased um, are not, uh, you can't use them as storage uh, 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 units uh, on our, uh, as of uh, the requirements of the building department. They are not compliant. So if you're planning to use them as big sheds, I think you're going to have a problem. Um, and certainly there was a discussion of utilizing those as part of the fence uh, of the maintenance facility, which would be totally non-compliant because that's a environmentally sensitive area. And it would also alter the uh, groundwater uh, plan that was established with uh, uh, for, for that site. So 
we can use them now because we're building, but um, they're going to have to go someplace or you're going to have to figure out uh, a solution for, for those uh, cargo containers. So um, we want to be legally compliant. So in the future, I think, uh, I think the uh, manager should uh, research what I've, I've mentioned, and I think he will find that I am telling the truth there and that you develop a strategy and a discussion on, on how you're going to uh, make adjustments. Thank you. Thank you, Doki. Thank you, Stephen. If there's nothing else, Eric, I would like to open up the public comment on closed session items. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm just resetting that. Uh, uh, you want public comment on closed session? Um, mm -hmm. That's up next. Okay, I'm waiting to see if a hand comes up here. One second. Okay. Okay. So I, you're hello. Yeah. Go me? ahead. So uh, actually, I didn't see this in the uh, uh, agenda, but I guess your meeting in closed session. It's indeed it's really frustrating that you have so many of the closed sessions and the the same report comes out. There, you know, basically uh, we didn't do anything, and so. Um, I just want to alert your responsibility, you, you guys, to your responsibility for um, open, being open and reporting out uh, problems uh, inside the district. Um, uh, unfortunately, the transparency uh, was not evident in the manager's report. It seemed like uh, he's holding back and maybe uh, I although he says you say that you're just discussing labor negotiations. Uh, I hope that's that's in fact uh, the case, but uh, um, be aware that you do have a responsibility to the public and to have it on record. And, and that's not a bad thing because you, who knows, maybe you can figure out things that you can't figure out in closed session. Um, so that's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. And with that, we should go into closed session. Hi. Okay. Unmuting myself. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> uh, he already left. I'll, I'll pass it on for you, Savon. Okay. All right. Thank you all. <laughs>